Good day, everyone. So my name is Jonathan David D. De La Cruz, and I will be your lecturer for Field Study 1. Now we are entering a new episode, uh, episode 9 and 10 for the field study. So for the episode 9, we'll be talking about preparing for teaching and learning, and the episode 10 is the instructional cycle. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so for the episode 9, we will be talking about preparing for teaching and learning. The life of a teacher is actually not that easy. It's not also that difficult, no, but it is challenging. The life of a teacher is also do not only start when you enter the classroom or ends when you get outside the classroom. The life of a teacher is continuous. Preparing for teaching and preparing for the learning of your students is actually really difficult. Now, here are some time-tested principles for teaching and learning. Number one, effective learning begins with setting clear expectation and learning outcomes. It is important that you as a teacher establish what you want to hear or what you want to learn or what you want your students to learn at the very beginning. But you must know that first as a teacher and then relay that to your learners once you start the instructions, okay? And because that's what you expect from them, that will be the one that you will be assessing at the end of the instructions. Number two, learning is an active process. What I hear, I forget. What I see, I remember. What I do, I understand. This is a phrase that we usually remember when we hear about active uh, learning as an active process. It is indeed, indeed an active process wherein you can actually learn more when you actually do things or do or apply what you have learned. Example, if you are dealing with mathematics, uh, continuous practice of calculations would really help the students rather than allowing them to memorize the formula itself right so allowing them to remember the memorize and then apply it in a several calculations that will really really help your students remember and understand the importance of your equation number two is that learning is a discovery of personal meaning of ideas students are given the opportunity to connect what they learn with other concepts learned with real world experiences and with their own lives now, it is important that learners understand the meaning of what they are learning. Discovery learning is actually one of the principles of education that has been rising uh, in the 21st century, but actually existed ever since. This is where Aristotle um, and other natural philosophers and, and as well as uh, scientists dealt with where they actually learn more when they discover. You give more value to the knowledge that you were actually able to unravel. Mas iingatan mo yung kaalaman na nahalungkat mo na ikaw kaysa sa kaalaman na binigay lang sa'yo. Okay? Especially if the students are given the opportunity to relate this to other fields of knowledge or other concepts as well. And more importantly is that if they can apply this to their day-to-day -day lives. And then lastly, learning is a cooperative and a, co and a collaborative process. Now, before the 21st century, um, cooperative and collaborative learning did not actually exist much. In the, in the Education 1.0, 2.0, learners are actually trained to study by themselves and then become workforce. Like they're trained to work. But now at the Education 4.0, uh, students are trained to create their own jobs. Okay? And it has to be cooperative and collaborative. Now is not the time, now is not the era of competition when it comes to education. Instead, it's a cooperation and collaboration. Because when you go outside the field, example, you're, you, you, uh, your students are engineers. Definitely, they will, they, there will be a time that they had to create a firm with fellow engineers as well. 
That's why cooperative and collaborative learning is very important to be established inside the classroom. And that's also where startup companies start, right? That's why it's also very important to establish cooperative and collaborative learning inside the classroom. That's why we have groupings, we have brainstorming, we have sizzle sessions with our students for them to have cooperation and collaboration. Because after all, um, in, in surviving the industry, in many industries today, you really have to cooperate and collaborate and no longer or set aside the competition, whether it be by race or whether it be by gender competitions when it comes to ano, no, kailangan ng isang tabi ito because now is the era of collaborative and cooperative learning. Now, in preparing for teaching and learning, number one that you should always remember is to review your objective writing. Now, in your objective writing, number one, always consider the cognitive domain. You actually have to consider three. Okay, so the first one is cognitive domain. You may consider, you actually, it's very recommended to consider the Bloom's taxonomy, Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy on cognitive domain, wherein it starts with remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Where, wherein before evaluation was the last and creation was the second to the last, but then again, it was exchanged because um, creation is actually a higher form of learning because you're already translating what you've learned into a new idea. That's why it's it's actually creation. Now, now each of these categories or, or each of these domains actually have uh, recommended words to be used and recommended activities to be used as well. The next one is affective domain. So in affective domain, we actually recommend the use of David Kraft's wall. Uh, okay, so we have here receiving, responding, valuing, organization, and characterization. Now, I will not singly detail each of this because, again, this is field study one. It is somehow expected from you to have a little bit or to have established knowledge about objective writing already. Now, the objective writing is very important in three aspects, cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. For the cognitive domain, it is important that you know that, but also the affective domain. Now, here, these five levels are actually very important. No? And then there are knowledge that only ends with receiving and then with responding and then valuing organization and characterization. Now, I want to jump with characterization. Characterization is wherein the students really puts value on what they learned and puts it in their lifestyle, okay? Next is psychomotor domain. Psychomotor domain, it is sometimes used, the Elizabeth Simpson's uh, levels. So that's uh, perception, set, guided response, mechanism, complex overt response, adaptation, and origination. Now, each of this has to be uh, indicated in your objectives. Now, in a daily lesson plan, in a daily lesson, it is encouraged to write at least three, maximum of five uh, objectives. Now, these objectives has to be clear and must hit as much as possible all these three cognitive, affective, and psychomotor domains. It has to be hit, okay? You have to consider that hindi pwedeng lahat uh, cognitive, okay? Hindi lahat ng objective mo sa isang session ay cognitive. Hindi din pwedeng lahat affective. Hindi din lahat pwede psychomotor. It has to be holistic. Remember that in the 21st century education, we are aiming and pushing for holistic learning. So, kailangan no, yung cognitive domain, yung affective domain, at psychomotor domain ay mailagay mo sa objective mo. At syempre, may apply mo sa proper instructions. Now, let's go to instructions. When we go to instructions, there are different teaching approaches and different teaching methods, of course, and strategies. Now, remember, when you are teaching 
uh, you really have to follow what you plan, okay? But sometimes, but actually, it boils down to your teaching philosophy. As a teacher, we are crafting our philosophy when we entered at the university and when we graduate. And along the way, as you continue your career as an educator, you would realize that your character as a teacher is changing, your principles is changing and developing for the better, of course. That's what we expect. Now, the philosophies and principles of teaching varies in different teachers. Sometimes there are more dominant uh, uh, dominant philosophies for this teacher than the other. Okay? Now, I want to gen I want to discuss a general approach on teaching. Number one is direct. So direct, also called a, as teacher-centered approach, this is applied previously. Okay, in the 20th century, wherein the teachers are the sole source of knowledge, wherein the teachers is the center. And the teacher controls the classroom and the teacher transmits and transfers the information direct to the students or direct to the learners. This is sometimes called spoon feeding. Okay. Now, um, direct teaching has been used and it can still be used up to date depending on the nature of the subject, of course. Now, when you are teaching, hindi ka pwedeng uh, mag, mag, it is not encouraged for you to use a different approach that is not uh, relevant to your subject matter. It is important to always consider your subject matter sa ituturo mo at sa principle mo din naman as a teacher, um, sa strategy mo. Now, here, you can actually use deductive, you can also use demonstrative, like you can do demos, and you can also do lecture methods. There are important topics that before, sabi kasi nila, now is not the time of of uh, direct teaching already, but actually no. There are knowledge or uh, certain topics in here up, up to 21st century na kailangan mo pa rin ng direct method or direct approach no, sa teacher-centered na kailangan si teacher ang magbigay ng information kasi we really cannot uh, put the entire gravity of the topic to the students. We still have a role as teachers. But, but this, this is, again, dependent on the subject matter that you are teaching and also dependent on, um, on, on the topic. Okay? So, but this has been widely used before. Pero ngayon, medyo bawas na siya kasi we are already using indirect. This is called the learner-centered approach. Now, the learner-centered approach is where, of course, the, teacher, the learners are the center of education and it is learner-controlled. Now, the students search for the information. The problem is that, remember, that in the 21st century, the teachers are no longer the sole, the sole source of knowledge. We are merely facilitators of knowledge. So, if the learners or the students search for information, ano na lang ang gagawin ni teacher? Ano ang gagawin ni teacher? We are to facilitate this knowledge. The problem is that there are a lot of forms of knowledge available on the internet, available on the books. Now, the role of teachers is to organize this thought no, this knowledge and then present it to the learners, which is actually more difficult. Because it's a direct center, kailangan you're one book away, one, one book away from your students or one book ahead than your students. Ngayon, sa indirect, sa indirect uh, approach, um, teachers has to be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, even more books away dapat from their learners. Kasi, once these learners enter inside the classroom, these students have different concepts of knowledge from different sources. Okay, some from culture, some from uh, the internet, some from the internet and other sources. Okay, so nag-iiba-iba ito. Iba-iba yung pinanggalingan ng knowledge at hindi mo na alam kung saan yung primary source ng knowledge na to. Now, as teachers, we have to organize this knowledge to present it to the students. Hindi natin pwedeng kung ano lang yung ma-search sa internet, yun na yun. Okay? Now, as teachers, we are facilitators of knowledge. We facilitate knowledge. 
we organize this knowledge. And then this knowledge, this appropriate knowledge for our learners, yun yung ipepresent natin sa kanila. Okay? We cannot, it, it's like actually giving the students a knife, no? Uh, giving kids uh, something that is um, not appropriate to them when you allow them to feed on knowledge. Okay? Kasi too much information would also allow them to be trained and to be uh, inform magkaroon ng information overload. So, ang gagawin natin mga teacher, i-organize natin ito at yung na-organize natin knowledge, yun yung ibibigay natin sa mga sudyante. Okay? Next is, of course, others. There are different types of teaching methods. Then, dyan yung brainstorming. Uh, of course, brainstorming is a cooperative and a collaborative way of learning. And then, nandyan ang constructive teaching, nandyan ang cooperative learning, and of course, the distance learning, which is being used at this time because of uh, the incident or the, because of what is happening in a global perspective. Now, in preparing for teaching and learning, I'm, I, there are a lot of principles, a lot of uh, philosophy, no? but in teaching, um, I'm going to present to you one uh, theory, one philosophy. This is actually the Dale's Cone of Experiences. So, according to Edgar Dale, that the more the learner use his or her senses, the more he or she will remember it. As you can see here, there is a passive learning and active learning. Now, um, if the students read it, only 10% is uh, will be remembered and then if he or, or if, if he or she uh, hears it only 20 percent will retain if the student sees it 30 percent will retain if the student sees and hear it as well 50 percent will be retained now active learning is when learners participate actively when they say and write now 70% of it will retain from them uh, to them and when students participate in simulation experiences and then designing up to 90% of what they did will be retained on their memory okay so the dale school of experience is actually very relevant because it's actually very, very true and very practical that Every time that the students use more senses, mas madami siya natututunan. Okay? Mas nagiging meaningful yung learning sa kanya. Now, again, these are just overview of the topics on preparing for teaching and learning because this is field study one. And it is expected that as teachers, as pre-service teachers, you are already aware on the philosophies that we've mentioned a while ago. Now, should you have any questions or clarifications, please feel free to message or email me. Okay, thank you very much and um, God bless.